Happy Friday, guys. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Fib Talk. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Christian Lopez. He is an ex-baseball player, and he's, he's going to share how his personal life journey led him to his purpose. Hi, Christian. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you for being on today. I'm busy doing some stuff. I mean, during this pandemic, I lost my job pretty early on. But, you know, it's funny. It's been this. Look, this pandemic sucks. It sucks for everybody. It sucks for (laughs) me and my wife and our families and stuff. But, you know, it's it's kind of been one of those things where the universe kind of hands you this kind of crappy situation. But I've turned it into something really positive because even though I don't have a nine to five uh, job anymore and I'm lucky to be getting unemployment, which, you know, brings in some kind of. Uh, finances to to my high to my household you know it's given me the opportunity to really work on this work that I really really feel strongly about and focus on my podcast and focus on coaching and focus on other things so even though this pandemic really sucks and it's like nothing we've ever seen before it's allowed me a really really good opportunity to build this practice to build this business and to build this this work and this message that I'm trying to put out into the world I absolutely agree. I was actually a real estate agent myself before the pandemic. Mm. I still am currently, but like you were saying right now, they kind of give me the opportunity to focus on this more, which yeah. is my passion and my purpose. So everything happens awesome. in design timing, right? Absolutely. There are no coincidences. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want you to share with everyone a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. Sure, absolutely. So I was a professional baseball player for about a decade. Um, All I ever wanted to do since I was a kid was my dream growing up. People would ask me, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? Major League Baseball player. That was it. There there was a short time there where my mom was like, hey, why don't you become a doctor? Like, you're a really good student. You're smart. You have good grades. You know, I think you'd be really good at it. You love helping people. I was just like, you know what? Yeah, maybe I could be a doctor and a professional athlete all at the same time. (laughs) And then I realized there's no way that could possibly happen. And then I also realized how much more schooling you have to go through. And even though I was a good student and I enjoyed school, after high school, I was like, I'm done. I just want to go play baseball. I don't want to go to school anymore. So when I found out how much schooling was involved with becoming a doctor, I was like, mom, I love you, but now nah, I'm going to be a baseball player. She was like, all right, fine, whatever. So that was my dream since I was a kid. Got to do it for, for 10 years. But when that came to an end, I didn't have a plan B. I, I was drafted out of high school, so I, I didn't have a college education. I didn't have any college experience at all. I had gone straight from high school to being a professional athlete. And that was my dream. Like I said, that was my focus. So I didn't really think about like, oh, what am I going to do when baseball comes to an end? Because to me, I was like, oh, I'm going to be a big leaguer and I'm going to make millions of dollars and I'm going to be rich and I'm going to be famous. And I'm not going to have to worry about getting another job after baseball. Baseball is going to be it. But it didn't happen that way. You know, none of that, none of those goals and dreams and aspirations I had set for myself uh, came to fruition. So when my career came to an end, I was just like, whoa, like, who am I? what's my purpose? You know, what's, who, what's my identity? I didn't know who the heck I was without a uniform on my back, without the label of professional athlete, professional baseball player um, attached to my name. So when my career came to an end, I had some soul searching to do. I had to figure out like, what do I want to do? And at that point, my career came to an end, you know, in a way that I didn't really want it to come to an end. So I still was left with that void of like, I I still want to be rich and famous. I still want to be validated. I still want people to see me in the bright lights. So I was like, hmm, how can I do that? Even though I'm not a baseball player anymore. I got it. I'll move to LA and become a Hollywood, Hollywood movie star. So I packed up all my stuff, left my family behind in Florida, moved to LA and went on a journey of becoming an actor. And for the first, you know, for the first year or so, it was cool. I was in a new city. I was meeting new people. I met my wife, you know, shortly after moving out here. I was like, all right, this is great. But after a couple of years, I just got to the point where I was like, this isn't, this isn't what I want to do. This isn't what I'm passionate about. This isn't, you know, I've, I was going to acting class with people who were literally actors since they were like five or six years old, kind of the same way I was a baseball player. So I was like, man, this isn't, this isn't what I want to do. I did it for the wrong reasons. And if you come to Hollywood to be rich and famous, I'm like, okay, fine. A lot of people do that. But when you see how tough it is and how many rejections you get and how long it takes you to maybe hopefully reach that fortune and fame that drive and that why behind why you're doing it is is not going to sustain you for very long so it didn't sustain me for very long so i got to the point where 
I was just unhappy and I came home one night after acting class and my wife was like, hey, babe, what's wrong? Like, I, I could just tell you've been off and something's up with you. Like, what's going on? Talk to me. I was like, no, babe, no, I'm good. I'm good. You know, just being a typical man. I didn't want to talk about my feelings. I didn't want to talk about my emotions. So I was like, nah, babe, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And then she just kind of kept egging me on. Like, come on, babe, open up. Like, I'm here. Like, I'm not going to judge you. And I just started, I just broke down and I started crying and like sobbing, like crying. Like I was just like, I don't know who I am. I don't want to know what I want to do. I'm scared. I'm worried. Like, I don't know what my life has turned into. And, you know, she was just very supportive and very loving. And, you know, after I kind of got over that, that sadness, I was just like, all right, what's next? So I was kind of in limbo for like about a year or so, not really wanting to do anything else because I was scared of failure, but not wanting to stay in the same position because I was unhappy with where I was. So I was kind of like, do I go? Do I not? Do I go? So finally, I was just like, all right, I got to make a move. So I decided to become a firefighter. I saw that it had so many of the, the common things that I saw in baseball, you know, the teammates, the brotherhood, that locker room atmosphere, the, the tight community, the the chance to be a hero in the community, all, all of those things that I missed from baseball. So I was like, all right, this is my new identity. This is my new purpose. This is my new career. So for two and a half years, I was studying, I was practicing, I was interviewing, I was getting my body in shape. I was doing all the things that I needed to do to become a firefighter. And then last year in March, I got a letter in the mail from the LA city fire department. I was like, all right, this is it. I'm starting my journey. I'm going into a fire academy. This is it. This is my new career. I don't have to worry about money and I don't have to worry about anything else for 20, 30 more years until I retire, have a nice pension and enjoy my life. So I opened the letter and it was a rejection letter. It said, Hey, we appreciate you applying, but yeah, we're not going to push you on in the process. You know, good, best of luck in your future endeavors. So again, I was crushed. Now I couldn't be rich and famous as, as a baseball player. I couldn't be rich and famous as an actor. I couldn't have a good career as a firefighter. Again, I was, in a per as a, I was at a point where I was just like, what, who am I? What is my purpose? Like, what, what am I supposed to do in this life? And at that time, I had already started to dive deep into self-development, self-growth. That's after a really uh, deep, vulnerable, honest conversation with a really good friend of mine, with another man who's a perfect example of what a vulnerable, in touch with his feelings, strong, courageous man is. So we had a nice long talk. And after that, I was like, all right, I have to make some changes. So I, you know, started developing every self-help book, self-growth book, self-development book, started watching Tony Robbins documentaries. I took a life coaching course. I started doing all these things because I was just tired of feeling like I was in this hole. So I was just like, nobody's going to just hand me anything. I have to make this happen for myself. So that's what I started to do. So when I got the rejection letter from the fire department, it hurt. It definitely hurt because it was like, damn, two and a half years down the drain, two and a half years that I'm never going to get back, that I was really busting my ass to make something happen for myself. But even though I was crushed and my ego was crushed in that moment, it was also like this kind of sign from the universe saying, hey, Christian, firefighting wasn't meant for you. That's not what you were meant to do. This is what you're meant to do. This coaching, this self-development, you need to focus in that direction. So I just took it as a sign, even though I was hurt and I was crushed and I was just like, all right, I just like, I got to focus on this. So started really focusing on that. Um, you know, the, I, like I said, I took the life coaching course and I wanted originally to work with people like me, athletes who had just finished with their career that were trying to transition from that life of an athlete to a life of just not being an athlete. And for me, that was one of the toughest things because for 10 years I was in this little bubble in this little world, in this little community of an athlete. And it's a lot different than the regular world of waking up at, you know, 7am every day to go on your commute to work and then come back home at five or six or whatever. And the same thing over and over. It's a lot different lifestyle, a lot different world. So I had to make that adjustment of being in that world. And all of a sudden from one day to the next, it was done. And I had to adjust to this world. So I wanted to originally focus on coaching people to make that transition because that transition was really tough for me. So I wanted to help them along with that. And then one of the coaches in that, in that coaching course that I took, she had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me and she was like, Hey, what do you think about just focusing on men instead of athletes? And at that time, you know, I was new coach. So I was like, no, I want to try to coach as many people as possible. Cause if I limit myself to just men, then I'm going to miss out on women and I'm going to miss out on clients and I'm going to miss out on money and I'm going to miss out on that. Um, but she, you know, she had a deep talk with me and she was like, look, you, you have this power of like engaging with people and being very vulnerable and being very comfortable in your own skin. There's a lot of men out there that can really use that. So she kind of planted the seed in my head. I was like, all right. So I started kind of to go that way and, and be like, not that I don't want to work with athletes. I would love to work with athletes because that's something that I can relate to. But right now I want to focus on men 
because I think men need it the most. I think it's harder for us men to be open and to be vulnerable and to talk about those struggles and those fears and those insecurities more than it is for women. Not saying that it's easy for women, but I think it's easier, you know, to talk about that stuff amongst your group of friends. So I started focusing on that and just fast forward to now, you know, I've, I've started this podcast a year ago. That's like 45, 46 episodes in. Um, I started this little private Facebook community. I just recently lost a Patreon page so I can start to build an even more tight knit community and start to, you know, and that's, I always had trouble with like marketing and self promotion and sales and all that stuff, just cause I, I, I hate, I feel weird asking people for money, but I had to get over that. You know, I had to look at it more as like, look, it's not, I'm not just asking people for money. I'm, you know, trading that value yes. for income and um, and it's a way not just to simply make money. It's a way that I can start to make this more my life's work and more my career. So I don't have to work 40 hours at a nine to five and then come home for two or three hours and work on this stuff. I want this to be something that I work on full time so I can dedicate all my time and all my energy to this stuff because this is stuff that I really really love. And, you know, just like the title of your show, I'm finally filling my purpose. I finally found my purpose and something that I enjoy, something that I'm really good at. And that's something that it's not only benefiting other people, it's benefiting me too. Like, that's what I love about this work. It's like this relationship of like, as I help people become better, help men become more vulnerable and more true and more real, that helps me. And when I become better, I can better help them. And it's just like this symbiotic relationship where we're just helping each other. And I just love it. So, so that's where I'm at right now. That's really interesting that you say that because we were just talking about that before we started recording how Mm -hmm. um, we found our purpose in life within the struggles and the up and downness of not knowing what's going to happen next. And then there's your purpose, right? Isn't it so awesome? It doesn't even feel like work. (laughs) You know what? It's so funny because when this whole thing started, this whole pandemic started and I started working before this, I was bartending, you know, I had been bartending pretty much since I moved out to LA and it's a really cool job. I work with really cool people. It's a cool place. It's a great way to practice my communication skills, my listening skills. Like I've had so much people practice for the past seven years and it's a really cool gig and I'm always constantly around people. So when, when this whole thing went down and I started, you know, I I wasn't working anymore. I was like, ah, man, this sucks. I can't, I'm such a people person that I can't, I can't just work from home. Like I need to be around, I need to be around teammates and colleagues. I, I just grew up that way. But now that I'm at home and I'm working on stuff that I actually care about, I can, I can see myself working from home if it's something that I really care about. If it's building this business, if it's building this work, if it's, if it's working on my podcast and having these deep vulnerable conversations, I can totally see myself working from home now because I found something that I actually want to work at. It's not like I'm at home, you know, doing data entry that I would hate. You know, it's, <laughs> okay. it's actually something that I enjoy. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I still want to be around people and I miss being around people and I miss being around my family. Luckily, I have a great relationship with my wife and we have each other, but it's tough to not be around friends and family and colleagues and teammates. But I finally found something that I really, really enjoy pretty much since, since I retired from baseball. You know, baseball was just... I loved waking up every day and knowing that I was going out to the field and I love waking up every day knowing that I'm going to have a podcast episode or knowing that I'm going to do something like this where I get to connect with somebody on a deeper level. And so hopefully somebody's going to watch this and be inspired and be encouraged. Like I really, really love this work. Isn't it awesome? I love it too. I wake up every day and I'm just like, what do I have to do today? Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It really is <laughs> I awesome. I find myself editing till like 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning and I'm still up like 6 30 ready to go work out. You know, no, it doesn't crazy. feel like work. It feels like yeah. this is your purpose, you know? And so Absolutely. You know, like, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. agree more. So um, I just want you to talk more about the vulnerability as far as, you know, being a man. Why do you feel that it's so hard for men to be vulnerable? Um, two words from my uh, grandparents and just elder Cubans that I grew up with. No llores. No llores. Don't cry. Don't cry. You know, if I can sum it up in just two words, um, you know, like we, like we spoke about growing up just as a man in general, but especially growing up in, in, uh, in a Cuban community, in the Cuban culture and just any Latino culture, there's a lot of machismo and there's a lot of misogyny and there's a lot of like, Hey, uh, boys don't cry, you know, boys suck it up and you man up and you're the man of the house and you're the provider and you're the protector and you're all, and you're all this stuff. And look, I've said this millions of times and I'll keep saying it. There's nothing wrong with being the tough, 
tough, macho, masculine guy, the, the courageous guy, the brave guy, the guy that protects your fi- family, the guy that stands up for what you believe in. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's also nothing wrong with being the sensitive, you know, affectionate, loving, caring, tender man either. And there's no reason that you can't be both. There's no That's reason. Exactly I've always... what I always say. Exactly. I there's always no say reason. that. Mm-hmm. And I was fortunate enough to, when I grew up, I was the firstborn uh, of my siblings. I'm the eldest. And my mom and I just always had this, this special bond and special connection. And we still do to this day. So I was always around her a lot. We were always hugging. We were always super affectionate. Um, to this day, I'll go home and visit her and I'll, I'll lay my head on her lap and she'll just play with my hair. And I'm just like, I feel like a little kid again. Um, but I just, I think because of that bond with my mom, I always grew up very sensitive. Um, not sensitive in a bad way, just sensitive to other people's emotions and other people's feelings. And I always grew up very affectionate. I'm a, I love hugging. Like hugging is one of my favorite things to do in this world. Yeah. So, um, so, and yeah, but then you know, being that way. And then growing up, once you reach a certain age as, as a boy, you can't be that way anymore. You're like, Hey, you got to man up, you got to toughen up. And then, you know, finding yourself in the sports, you know, in sports from a very early age, like I did, that's another environment where you're taught to hide your weaknesses, you know, not just from a sports uh, perspective or from an athletic perspective, but from an emotional perspective as well. Like if you strike out, you can't cry. If you, if you lose a game, you can't be upset. You have to like, just keep it bottled up inside and you can't really express yourself. And look, I'm not advocating for kids out there. If they strike out, cry. No, not at all. I don't, you need to be able to handle your emotions, but you're not taught to handle your emotions. You're not taught to manage and express them. You're taught to simply suppress them and hide them. You know, when a kid strikes out, it's like, don't cry. Instead of being like, Hey buddy, why are you so upset? Hey, it's okay. You're going to strike out. Like that's just part of the game. Like it's going to happen to you hundreds and hundreds of times. If you keep playing this game, you know, let's figure out a way where you're not so upset, you know, but you're taught just, just don't cry. Just don't cry. Just don't talk about feelings. Don't talk about emotions. So, you know, that's the way I grew up, you know, taught and, and, and it was tough because I've always been an emotional man. I've always been a very sensitive man. So it was tough to like be emotional and sensitive in some settings, like with my girlfriends, you know, I can be emotional, I can be sensitive. But then when I was around my teammates and around like macho Cuban men, I had to like, you know, kind of cut that stuff off and I couldn't really be that way. So I was, I was always constantly wearing these masks and, and being this chameleon and fitting in, in different places. And where that really affected the most, affected me the most was when my baseball career came to an end, because when it came to an end, I felt like a failure. I felt like a loser. I felt like, like this was who I was meant to be and I didn't become that person. So I was just like, what's the point of me even being around? What's exactly. Yeah. I put so much pressure on myself. I was my own worst enemy for, for so long. And, you know, it really affected me because I was going through fear, through insecurity, through doubt, through worry, through shame, to unworthiness, through not feeling good enough, through all these negative emotions that I was going through but I had no way of expressing them. I didn't know how to express it. I didn't even know I had them. I just thought that I was angry, you know? And that anger, that suppression of those emotions would always manifest itself as anger, you know, in fights with girlfriends or me punching a hole through a wall or me just losing, losing my, can I curse? Yeah, of course you can curse. Losing, losing my shit <laughs> or me losing, <laughs> losing my shit. Um, but yeah, it, all, it, all, it would always express or manifest itself in anger. And I think that's the case for a lot of men because we're not taught to, Yes. You know, we're not taught to really analyze our emotions. You know, we, we, you know, a girlfriend cheats on us and we're, and we're fucking pissed. We're angry. Right. Like, right. no, it's not. Yes, you are angry. That's how it's showing up. But no, you're hurt. You're heartbroken. You're jealous. You're, you're lonely. You're feeling all these other things, but you're not taught to express those things. You're not taught to really know that you have these other emotions. So it always comes out as anger. And that was the case for me. You know, I had this short temper early on in my relationship with my wife when we were dating, you know, I had just had a bad temper. She would, you know, we would get in these fights and she would say something not purposely, but she would say something that would just get me right in that wound, right in that unhealed wound that I hadn't processed that I hadn't taken a look at. And I would lose my shit. I would, I would cuss at her and I would yell and I would blame her. And it wasn't anything that she said. It was shit that I hadn't dealt with yet, stuff that I hadn't processed yet. And because she said a certain something, whatever it was, it reminded me like, oh my God, I'm still hurting from that. Exactly, exactly. So the reason I want men to be more vulnerable, even though it's scary as hell, even though it's really tough work, is because if you don't learn to be vulnerable, if you don't first learn to have self-awareness and get in touch with those parts of you that are hurt, that are crushed, that are painful, that still haven't healed, 
you're never going to be full of yourself. You're never, you're never going to find out why am I so angry? Why do I blow up so, so many times? Why do I get angry when somebody cuts me off in traffic? It's not because somebody cut you off in traffic. It's because that person cutting you off in traffic reminds you that you feel like a loser. You feel like a failure. Yeah. So that person cuts you off, that cutting you off reminds me like, oh shit, yeah, I feel like a loser and I'm a failure. And that guy just made me look, feel like a loser and a failure even more. So I'm going to get angry at him. So, so that's, that's why I want to help men get in touch with themselves and be more vulnerable. And, and like we talked about before we, before we started recording, vulnerability is not a bad thing. Back in the day when we were living in caves and, you know, being vulnerable meant being, meant going out of your cage and, and uh, out of your cave and being exposed to the elements and not having a spear to protect yourself, not that kind of vulnerable. Vulnerable in the sense of like taking who you really are and taking what you've been through and owning that shit yes. and accepting it. And sharing it with the world and be like, hey, man, this is me. Like, yeah, I'm not perfect. I have so many flaws. I've made mistakes. I've said stupid things. I've done stupid things. But it's okay. I own it and I accept it. Because you judging me and looking at me, you've done stupid things too. And you've said said stupid things too. And you have your own fears and your own insecurities. So let's just help each other out, you know. And just doing this work on myself for the past three years has, like I told you, my wife just tells me all the time, like, you're so different, babe. You've changed so much. And it feels really good to know that. It feels really good to say that because I know there's a good person, a, a really good person that's worthy and that's good enough deep down inside. But I put on this mask for so long that I didn't think, I didn't even remember that person was, was down there. But then when I started to see that that person was down there, I still had these fears of like, he's not good enough. He's not smart enough. He's not this enough. He's not this enough, whatever it was. But now it's just like, it doesn't matter what my job is or how much money I make or this or that. I'm always going to be the same person deep down inside. So knowing that and owning that and accepting that prepares me so much more for my job or for my career, or for my relationships, or whatever it is, because I know at the end of the day, even if I fail, even if everything turns to crap, I know that at the end of the day, I can be proud of the person that I am. And that's going to make me resilient and make me and better prepare me for anything that I'm going to face in life. That's really interesting. That's awesome. I'm so happy you said that about accepting your yourself. I was just mentioning to a girl, girlfriend of mine the other day, I said, once you accept your journey, I mean, like all your flaws, your ups and downs, good, bads, the crazy things you've done, the things you probably never told anybody, that was kind of crazy thing. Yep. Like once you accept all of that, other people will start accepting your journey too. And that's why sure. it's crazy. Like this is a crazy example, but someone like Cardi B, for example, she was crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> my wife and i are always saying that it's okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, because she's so accepting of herself she loves herself she ha- she's a little too much as far as saying like oh i don't give an f i don't give an f I, yeah, that yeah. Part is like a little extreme but the yeah. core of who she is she accepts her journey she's like yes i was this person this person but now i'm this yeah. person everybody loves her Cause they're yeah. like, Oh, she's so real. She's so raw. I'm like, everybody could be like Cardi B like in their own personal individual way. Like accept your course. journey. Don't be ashamed. If you used to yeah. do whatever you used to do in your past, yeah. don't be ashamed and be like, I don't know if I share this with the world, are they going to judge me? Yeah. How people perceive what you say is not anything you could do about. Like that's exactly, you, you, know you I mean? can't, yeah, yeah. You can't control that. So you stop, stop stressing your yourself out. Right. And you put it out there with the intention of like sharing the knowledge to help other people and how people perceive it. It's like, it's not really up to you. Of you course. Know? And something that I always like to tell people too, is like, look, if you're really, if you're really truly being yourself and sharing the darkest parts of yourself and, and sharing things that, you know, somebody out there is going to ridicule you for, is going to shame you for, you know, if those people that shame you and that ridicule you, are those the people that you want to be around anyway? Are those the people that you want to associate yourself with? You want to surround yourself with people, yes, that are going to push you and inspire you and light that fire under your butt when you need it, push you to be your best, of course. But you also want to surround yourself with people who are going to support you and love you for exactly who you are. Doesn't mean they're going to let you slide and let you skate and let you say terrible things, but they're going to check you and be like, yo, is that really you? They're going to hold you accountable. Exactly. Those are the people you want to surround yourself with, not people that are going to shit on you because you're being real and you're being honest. No, you should surround yourself with people that will accept you just as you are. And truth be told, sometimes when people do shit on you because you're being too honest and vocal, it's because they secretly wish they had that in them. And then Absolutely. when you're being that person, you're reminding them of what they're capable of being and they're not able to do it as of right now. They don't know that they're always capable of doing that. But because Absolutely. in their current right now, they're not able to be that vocal. You're kind of reminding them of like the piece yep. of themselves that they wish they could change. That's kind of what I feel like it stems from. 
So spot on. So spot on. That reminds me of, you know, of back, you know, a few years back, I used to be, I used to hate being around negative people. Like I would do everything I can and I still don't purposely want to be around negative people. <laughs> but when somebody negative or complaining or whatever would come around me, I'd be like, oh no, just get away. I don't want to talk to you or whatever. Where what I realized, you know, looking back at it after doing all this work was those people would remind me about the things that I was, you know, being negative about and that I hadn't worked on in myself. So when those people would start to complain about things and say certain negative things, it would remind me of the things that I hadn't dealt with yet. And that's why I didn't, that was part of the reason why I didn't want to be around them other than the, like the energy suck and the, and the drag, you know, of course, I don't want to be around that. Nobody really does. But what I realized was that they actually, they reminded me of like, Hey, you're fuck, you got a bunch of negative shit that you haven't dealt with either. And you're not dealing with it, you know, and you don't want to deal with it. That's why you exactly, exactly. That's what it was. It was a mirror. It was a mirror. And I was just like, and that's what I realized after doing work. I was like, I need to start dealing with my own negative shit because I'm not perfect. There's stuff that I complain about and that I want to be better or, or this or that. But that was, that was a reminder. So they reminded me of that. That's really cool. I'm glad we're having this conversation. It's nice to hear a male perspective. I've, thank you. I appreciate that. I had a that. conversation like this was with Pierce. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> Pierce, is, Pierce, is, Pierce is awesome. I want to like re-recommend him for the podcast, for this show again. <laughs> I know. He's really yeah. awesome. He's, he's so awesome. Powerful. Yeah, yeah. As soon as like the first time I met him, we met in a, in our Toastmasters speaking club. And from the first day he showed up and he spoke, I was just like, I'm going to connect with this dude on a deep level for sure. Besides, you know, having the sports in common, obviously that was a huge reason, but just his story and what he shared and what he was trying to do with his life and for other people, I was just like, me and this dude are going to connect. And like, we're like really good friends now. I'm going to be joining your uh, Zoom calls for Toastmasters next week. Oh, nice. I'm, I haven't. I, so I, I'm not in the club anymore. I kind of stopped going like a few months back, but maybe I'll come and, yes. and, and be a guest with you. Yeah. Um, it'll be Toast, fun. Toastmasters is, is great. It was, it was a huge reason why I started my podcast, a huge reason why I'm so much more comfortable having these conversations. Um, yeah. It's, Toastmasters was great for me. That's really cool. Yeah. I want to learn how to do public speaking. And, and yeah. here he was like, I'll teach you. I'll help you. You should come on the yeah. Toastmasters um calls and i was like yes i awesome. would love that it's, yeah it's gonna be great you're gonna you're, i think you're really gonna enjoy it awesome cool yeah. really good okay so going back to our questions so thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing so much i feel like you of covered course. everything you if you need saying? to cut if you need to cut me off if i'm talking too much I just be like hey, cut me. You off. Okay. i want you to have i was gonna say have your own show but you already do <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you tell us about that yeah, of course. So um, that was something that kind of spawned out of this work that I'm doing. So when I first started this work, um, the way I started first expressing myself was at Toastmasters. But then I was also doing like little blog posts on Medium and, and putting them out there and just, you know, doing more personal posts on, on Facebook, not like word vomit and just sharing everything, but just, you know, sharing what I've been going through and, and stuff like that. So it started more of like a writing, typing thing. But then I realized I was just like, man, sometimes I have so many thoughts and, and ideas that I want to get out and I type too slow and I write too slow. So I was like, what's a good way to get that out in a better way? So I was like, oh, maybe I'll start a podcast. And I had always really enjoyed podcasts. I've always enjoyed listening to them. Um, and I've always kind of like, man, it'd be cool to, to just be on a podcast one day. And then I was just like, why don't I just start my own podcast? You know, I can take this stuff that I'm already typing about or, or blogging about and put it in a podcast form and I can have guests or whatever. So I had this idea in my mind. And again, the, the idea behind the podcast was to have these vulnerable conversations and to talk about these feelings and these emotions and stuff that guys, that men usually don't, don't talk about and don't, and don't express. So that was the idea and the aim behind it. But again, because of my own personal fears and worries and doubts and, and worrying about who's going to listen to it. Who's going to make fun of me? What if trolls say that I'm stupid? What if trolls say that I'm a beta male and that I'm weak and I'm this. So from the day that I had the idea to do it to when I actually started doing it was about a year. You know, it took me a year to kind of get over that fear and get over that hump and take that leap. Yeah, I feel you. And this is not an easy thing to do. This show, podcasting, putting yourself out there, opening yourself up to ridicule, to shame, it is not easy. But once you start to do it, 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 you just become so much more courageous and you realize there are so much more people out there who need this than people that are going to make fun of me or, or give me shit or whatever. Like there's so many people that have reached out to me that it's that just actually like it, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, oh it's my awesome. God, the amount of, of positive feedback you get, it's like, 
you always think of the negative, but you forget. Of course, the of, of the course. The feedback you get is probably overwhelming in comparison to the. Negative. Of course. Yeah. yeah, and I was and I was there, so that's why it took me a year to finally do it. And then one day I was just like, you know what? Just get over that fear. Just there, the only way that you're going to get over it is to face it and just do it. So I just got on my cu- computer and I was like. Google, how do you, how do you start a podcast? And I already had this good microphone because of my wife. I had the lap, I had the laptop already. I was just like, I don't need, I just need to find out the, the technique or the, the, the technical aspect of it. So, you know, I just Googled, how do you start, how do you start a podcast? And I just researched and I did, you know, and I learned what I needed to learn. And then one day I was just like, all right, here we go. And my first episode was, was called my story. And it was pretty much just me sharing how I got to this point, pretty much what I've talked about so far on this show. And then from there, you know, I did a couple more solo episodes and then I was like, you know what, I want to have some guests on. So I started looking through social media and listening to other podcasts and like, oh, I like this person. Let me reach out to them and just started growing from there. And now, like I said, I'm like 45, 46 episodes in and I'm hoping to grow even more. Um, But it's been, I knew I would enjoy it, but I've enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Like it's, it's awesome. awesome. You know, it's, 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 it's so much, I don't know. I just love having these conversations and I love going deep and I love people to share their stories because I know from my personal perspective, listening to podcasts and listening to somebody's story of triumph, uh, you know, going through their struggles and opening up about their fears and their insecurities and all that stuff that inspires me. You know, that makes me feel like, man, I've gone through that stuff. And if he or she went through that stuff and, and, you know, was able to find success or whatever it is for them, I can do it too, you know, and that, that is inspiring and encouraging to me. So that's what I'm hoping to do with my own podcast is share these stories and hopefully inspire other people to, to go out and just, you know, get after it. Yeah. And like I were mentioning earlier, before we started recording again, you were mentioning how people always see the success and they see the end, you know, of what people are doing, but they don't see like what happens along the way or like, of course, what gets of course. Them there. so, you know, we see them on social media. They're even Tony Robbins, even as someone as successful as Tony Robbins, like people really knew his story of like how he, he became who he is today. It's so mm-hmm. inspiring, you know, it's not just yeah. like, oh, you just, you know, there are famous who, people who get famous overnight, you know, they go yeah. viral. But people who are influential that have been doing this work, self-development, yeah. they all have been through the same similar journey that we're all on. So it's really interesting to yeah. see how we're so similar, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's what I love. You know, for me, social media can be like a double-edged sword. Like the good part about it is I found people like you. You know, obviously we found each other through, through a common friend and peers. But the people, some of the guests that I found for my podcast, some of the people that I find for my private Facebook community, I, if, if it wasn't for social media, for Facebook, for Instagram, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to find these people, you know? So that's the great part about social media. I have people from like the UK, you know, listening to my podcast and messaging me on Instagram, like, Hey, I just listened to your last episode. It was awesome. I was like, bro, you're like in another country in another time zone. Like if, if it was back in the 1800s, I couldn't even send you a postcard, you know? So, <laughs> so just having social media is awesome. That's a great part of it because I do get to connect and to interact with, with this community that I'm building. But the bad part of it is, is like you said, so many of what you see on, so much of what you see on social media is just the highlights. You know, it's the good stuff that people, you know, the, the, the fancy cars and the big houses and the, the models and, you know, popping bottles at the club and stuff like that. And you think to yourself, like, man, this person has it so easy. Like, they have the life of my dream. This is a life that I want to aspire to. But what you don't see behind the scenes yeah. is they're up at 5 a.m. every day, busting their ass, doing what they need to do. It's the 15, 20, 30 years that they've put in to this work to finally find success, their own version of success. And that's what social media sometimes doesn't allow you to see. And that's why I think that's why I think there's a lot of, you know, this epidemic of like loneliness and not feeling good enough because I think younger people look at social media and be like, man, this person's so famous and rich and like, it's easy for them, but it's not easy. They've put in that work. They have put in the time they have put in the sacrifice and what you're seeing is the end product, but you didn't see the process. And you didn't see the journey. They're still maturing. They're still becoming, they're of still, course. you mean, Tony Robbins, you know, exactly. He, exactly. He just currently went on a live, uh, like an international, like, I guess he was doing his classes over the internet, which he never mm-hmm. even does, or his, I'm sorry, not classes, but uh, the this, this speeches his, that he does. The UPWs and, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was so interesting. Even he's trying new things. Like he's at the ultimate highest right now and he's still trying yeah. to figure things out and learning how to be 
you know, because there's always new people coming. So he always yeah. has to keep up and he's always of course. Eating, he's always exercising and making yeah. sure his self-development tools are ready to go too, you know? So it's not like of a, course. it's a never-ending journey that we're on. Exactly. And I think that people that are doing this work, at least for the most part, is they realize that it is a never-ending journey. Like if you think like, oh, I've learned everything I need to learn. I've grown all I need to, all I need to grow. It's no, it's, it's just untrue. There's always, especially, I mean, if you ever want to have a boring, you know, life, okay, fine. Stop learning, stop growing and just do whatever it is that you want to do. Fine. But I want to keep tapping into like, cause I'm never going to be perfect. Nobody's ever going to be perfect, but I want to reach for that perfect higher self that I have inside. I want to keep striving to be that person because look, I'm a human being. We're all human beings. We're going to, we're going to fuck up. We're right. going to say things. So we're going to say the wrong things. We're going to do the wrong things. We're going to be lazy. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to have failures. We're going to have all this stuff. We're human beings, but I want to keep striving to be that higher self, that, that good self that I have inside of me every day. And it's going to be a constant work. It's going to be a constant process. It's going to be a constant uh, journey. It's not something that like, Oh, okay, I reached this level and now I'm done. I'm done. Oh, okay. there's going to be a little bit level. And that's, and look, that's not to say, you know, you have to find that balance of gratitude and uh, this, sure. this, uh, I'll never forget this quote that I read in, in, a, in a blog post years ago, but it always stuck with me. He said, um, always be happy, never be satisfied. And what that means to me is 100% about gratitude. Like always be happy, always be grateful for what you have because you're lucky to have what you have. But at the same time, never be satisfied with what you have. And it's not to say, it's, it's kind of weird, and, but for me, it just means gratitude. You yeah. know, be grateful for what you have, but at the same time, strive for more. Strive to be a little bit better every single day. Strive to keep pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. Strive to, um, to keep facing your fears. You know, if you have, you know, if you made X amount of dollars, try to make this much more. Or if you have this much of, of an audience, try to get this much more. Or if your business is this big, try to add another employee. Whatever it is, whatever area of your life it is, you know, always strive to be a little bit better each and every day because we're never going to get to that picture of perfection in, in a million lifetimes, we'll never get there. So just try to be a little bit better every day. Yeah. And I always say too, I say, you know, if you're not growing, you're disintegrating. If you're disintegrating, you're kind of dying of slowly, little yeah. by little. Right. Yeah. And, and when you reach perfection, that means you're done growing. Yeah. So there's only, you know, going, you know, there's, dying, there's only one way to go. Right. Yeah. So it's like, that's why you shouldn't reach for technique, like the word perfection, but more mm -hmm. so being like perfect. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. of yourself every single day. Exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. Cool. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> okay. So how do you deal with anxiety and stress? Like what is your go-to thing that you do to bring yourself back to? Uh, meditation is, is huge for me. Uh, meditation, you know, this is something that I picked up when I first started doing this work. And in the beginning, you know, I did it for a while because I was super excited about it and it was new. And then I kind of fell off and it's kind of been, you know, on and off for a while. But now over the past, I don't know, since the beginning of this year, maybe it's been a pretty much every day, at least Monday through Friday, sometimes on the weekends, I kind of sleep in and I kind of, you know, don't meditate. But Monday through Friday, I'm doing at least 10 to 15 uh, minutes of meditation every morning. And that has been huge for me as far as like my anxiety and my stress and, you know, helping me focus. You know, I think for me, that's, I, I, I downloaded this app called Balance. It's a really good uh, meditation yeah, app. Yeah. They were, yeah, they were given away when this pandemic first started, they were given away a free, a free year membership. And I was like, yeah, I'll sign up for a free year membership. So I signed up. And what I like about this is like, you can answer a bunch of questions when you first download the app and it kind of curates your, your kind of like meditation, your guided meditation. So for me, my biggest thing was increasing my focus because I've always felt that I was somebody who, you know, who couldn't really sit still for too long. Like I would, my mind would be over here, would be over there. I'd have to get up and do something. But also, I also hadn't found something that I really enjoy doing like this work. Once I found this work, I'm like, man, it wasn't so much that I couldn't focus. I just wasn't really doing something that I really cared about too much. Like now I found something I really care about. I can be here all day editing a podcast or doing something like this or making connections or whatever. So meditation for me has been huge in helping me with anxiety and helping me with stress taking deep breaths, just really deep belly breaths. Just whenever I'm just sitting here and I feel like a little knotted up, I'll just take just really deep breaths and slow down. Um, walks around the neighborhood with my wife and our dog, just getting outside and getting in nature. Um, time with my wife, deep conversations with my wife. Um, yeah, those are things that, that really help me out. 
having a, a partner like how your partner, you know, sounds like she's an amazing woman. That's also very yeah. important to have a partner yeah. on the same energy level as you. So they hold you accountable. They're there for you. They make you talk when you don't want to speak, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's kind of what you need. You need someone who's exactly. step out of your element to of try course. new things. That's awesome. So yeah. what's your personal affirmation or motto that you like to live by? Um, I haven't, I don't really do affirmations. There was times where I was like, I would listen to, to certain guided meditations where I would pick up an affirmation. Um, but if I had to pick one, just that, that I always try to keep top of mind for myself is you are good enough because oh. that's something, that's something that I've struggled with, especially, especially after my baseball career came to an end. Like I felt like one of the biggest things was, and I think one of the biggest things that helped me back in general from relationships to jobs, to careers was you're not good enough. You're not good enough if, for this career. You're not good enough to start this podcast. You're not good enough for this relationship. You're not good enough for this job. You're not good enough to express yourself. You know, everything was kind of based around that core belief, that core fear of you're not good enough, you know, because whatever traumas that I went through or whatever made me really deeply believe that I wasn't good enough. Yeah. So, you know, just doing the work that I've been doing and doing the podcast and building this community it's just, it's those daily reminders when people reach out to me and say, hey, thanks for putting out this episode or thanks for talking about this. You know, those are daily reminders that, you know what? I am fucking good enough to you do this. You know, enough. I am, I am good okay. enough to do this. So for me, that's, I think that's my biggest one. It's just that reminder of you are good enough. That is a really good yeah. one. I like yeah. that a lot. I want to actually, now that you mentioned that, I want to get it in a picture frame and put it on my wall so I see it all the time. Because I oh, have yeah. The same thing with me. I always feel like I could be better or is this enough? You know, always questioning myself and doubting myself. And that yep. definitely comes from childhood, um, sure. like patterns that were subconsciously mm -hmm. picked up along the way that we yep. need to work I on. Agree. And um, how can people contact you? Instagram, Facebook, what's your website? Can you share your podcast name? All that good. For stuff. sure. Absolutely. <laughs> so I don't have a website. I mean, I started to put together a website, then I didn't really go in that direction. I will eventually, but no website as of yet. Uh, best place is Instagram, uh, Clopey, C-L-O-P-E-Y. It's kind of like a play on my last name, Lopey, Lopez, and then C for my first name. Yeah. Um, uh, podcast is called Behind the Masculinity masculinity is spelled m-a-s-k dash u-l-i-n-i-t-y and then i also have a private facebook group around that same name behind the masculinity those are the best best places to find me and to and to reach out to me and i love interacting with people so if you hear this and you want to reach out to me on instagram i always always respond back and i love i just love getting to know people and i love sharing stories and i love being inspired and i love inspiring other people so if you if you hit me up on instagram dm me i'll, I'll definitely get back to you can I can I throw an idea at you? Sure. Okay. Of so my brother is really a great speaker. He's a pastor. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. He also comes from uh, a drug background, self development. He literally taught himself the tools. You know, given he has people in his life that love and support him, so he mm -hmm. became you know from an awesome, amazing guy to this phenomenal husband. He's just awesome. I absolutely adore him. That's that's great. Favorite. I love that. So I, love I would that. love for love him that. to come on your show. <laughs> sure. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, reach out, connect us. Definitely. I love. I just love having. You're I just so love good. having men. Yeah, I love having men of that caliber because I, I think we. I think we can all get there. You know, I think we can all get there. It's just relinquishing that that fear and that insecurity that we all have. You're if you're a man out there and you think you're not scared of anything, you're not insecure, I call bullshit. We all have fears and insecurities and struggles. And one of the main reasons why I wanted to nominate him for your show, which I know I shouldn't be doing that without you asking <laughs> <laughs> but because he, we come from an Iranian background and it's mm -hmm. very similar to your background as far as like, oh, yeah. macho guy, yeah. and like, don't you cry and you know, like yeah. all this. Of course. Like, no, I know. So I think it would be great for, for the both of you to share your Absolutely. ideas on that because he has a for lot sure. of things to say. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love hearing stories and I love going deep on these conversations. Yeah, definitely definitely hook us up, connect us uh, whichever way is best for you. Yeah, I would love to. I love to. So I'll have yeah. him reach out to you. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, cool. I want to post it on my Instagram. So when you're done with that, send it to me. With okay. Sweet. <laughs> sweet. Yeah, sweet. Awesome. Um, and going back to our conversation, who inspires you? Um, my wife, for sure. You know, my mom, my mom as well, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's definitely men in my life as well that, that inspire me. But my mom from a very early age, she was just so loving and so such a great mom and, and did whatever she needed to do for us kids. She went through a lot 
in her childhood and her life overall. But she just stayed resilient and she did what she needed to do to, to take care of us and, and to be a good mom. And she's such a great mom. Um, her growing up and then my wife, you know, if it wasn't for my wife, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have this podcast. I wouldn't be doing this work. She inspires me and motivates me. She's one of the strongest, smartest, best, not even women, just people that I've ever been around and ever met. Um, so she inspires me on a daily basis. She's such a hard worker and she's just great. What's her name? Anna, Anna Kasparian. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, I don't want to re- uh, re- uh, recommend her for the, the episode just because she's super busy and super swamped oh, already. But, um, but I do want to recommend a gentleman that I just had on my podcast. Uh, his name is Daniel Diaz. Oh, nice. um, he's, he, yeah, he's a life and a business coach. He's a uh, part Cuban as well, <laughs> but just such a great dude. Uh, if you, if you go check out the podcast, it's the last episode that I posted and he's just a, such a, op- like he's, He's the example of, of, of the man that I want to surround myself with and that That's I want cool. to kind of show to the world. Like he's such a, such a good dude. That's really awesome. I'm going to add Anna on Instagram and just say hello. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For okay. sure. Yeah. You'd love, you, you guys would definitely. <laughs> oh, for sure. She's, you would love her. Like she's, she's awesome. And yeah, there's so many similarities in between like the women that you guys are and, and, you know, coming from similar, similar yeah. backgrounds, you know, she's kind of like, you know, being an outspoken woman and being like a strong woman like she is, she's kind of like the, she's different from a lot of women in the Armenian community, kind of like I'm sure you're different from a lot of women in the, in the, yeah, (laughs) in your community. Outspoken, you know. Exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, you'd love her. She's, she's amazing. Yeah, I'm definitely going to message her and say hello. She sounds like an amazing woman. Thank you for for talking about her and and allowing me to introduce myself to her. I'm excited. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Cool. And as a last thing that I would like to go over with you is a message that you like to share, a positive message, anything that you like to leave our conversation with. Um, just, just pretty much based on, on the affirmation that I shared is you're good enough just as you are. If that's the one message that you get from my work, from my podcast, from anything of mine that, that you see or that you watch, it's like you're good enough just as you are. You know, and I think if any of us, men, women, children, if we can start from that place of like, man, I'm good enough just as I am. I don't need to prove myself. I don't need to have this certain job or make this money or have this car or have this, this house or whatever it is. I'm good enough just as I am. When you really start from that genuine place and that genuine belief that you are good enough just as you are without anything else, I think that sets you up to live a great life. And that's not necessarily, that necessarily doesn't mean that you're going to be rich and famous, but it means that no matter what happens in your life, you're going to be ready for it. And you're going to be prepared because you're going to come from that core, that foundation of like, all right, I lost my job, whatever. I'm good enough to get another one. All right, this person broke up with me. All right, I'm good, I'm, I'm good enough to find love. You know, whatever it is, just start with that place of, especially for you men out there, don't think you have to be macho and manly and prove yourself. You're good enough just as you are, bro. You're good enough just as you are. Show up like that. Trust me, your relationships, your job, your career, everything around you will change for the better. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're such an amazing person, Christian. I'm so happy to be met. I can't wait till the pandemic's over. We can have a barbecue, invite everyone. Everybody. Hell yeah. A little freaky, little Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern barbecue. Oh man. What do you guys call? What what do you guys call it? What? Uh, So Armenians, Armenians call like a little backyard uh, barbecue horovats. We call it potluck. Oh, I like it. I love it. Either way, it's, it's good people and good food. It's a Middle Eastern accent. It's a potluck. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, for sure, yeah, man. For also, sure. Let's make it happen. Together, yeah. I'll invite my brother. We'll invite, um, you know, all our friends. We'll get together. Yeah. It's just with this pandemic, we can't do anything right now. <laughs> I know. I know. It's tough. It's tough. But it allows us to have conversations like this. So it's, there's something good coming of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everything that you shared today. Thank you for sharing your story. You're very inspiring, and I'm so happy that Pierce nominated you. And I look forward to getting to know you and your beautiful girlfriend as long life yeah, friend. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely. Thank you, Nicole, for having me on. This was absolutely. this was great. Like we just made it happen, kind of on a whim. Like you hit me up yesterday, and I was like, let's do it today, and it was awesome. So, <laughs> so thank it. you for having me on. Keep doing the awesome work that you're doing. It's it's definitely making a difference. Thank you. Same to you. Same yeah. to you as well. Have a great rest of the day. You as well, Nicole. Thank Thank you. And as always, thank you for tuning in for another episode of Fib Talk. I appreciate you guys so much. Make sure you guys connect with Christian, follow him on Instagram, join his Facebook group and see 
what all his amazing work is about. And also, don't forget to subscribe for a new episode of Fifth Talk every Friday. See you guys on the next episode.